Okay, we would like to welcome each one of you for our day two, session two of Mandate with God. And uh, we just hope that you were blessed yesterday listening to the introduction of what Dr. Pastor Sean had brought out for us. So we'll dive into the second, second season and uh, second session of learning the mandate with God. Over to you, Pastor Sean. Well, thank you so much, Daniel, and all the viewers out in India, Southeast Asia, and those of you who are connecting with us in Africa, Europe, the UK, and the Americas. God bless you and greetings in Jesus' wonderful name. I just want to pray for you, Lord. Help us to understand that this session during lockdown is a man's date with you so that you can work on us on the principle called let us make man. And so today I speak life, healing, hope, deliverance, and restoration to every man, to every husband, to every father listening out there in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yesterday, I raised the inspirational component around this week-long series that we're doing on Daniel Kadros' Facebook page, 7 p.m. India time, just for an hour. I raised this, that as men, we need to reinvent ourselves like a David Bowie. We need to go through an evolution and a metamorphic process so that even when we come out of this lockdown, we come out unlocked because it's so possible that we could have gone into lockdown with things that have held us down as men or locked us down as men for many years. And so while we're going through a geographical lockdown, Many of us as men, when honest and transparent, we have been through financial, emotional, spiritual, relational, and even career lockdowns. And it is hoped by the time we finish on Friday, and so stay with us, Daniel Kadros page, Facebook page, Monday to Friday, it's hoped that your lockdown will bring your unlocking as you treat this 7 to 8 p.m. India time as a unlocking with God. So today, I wanna to get straight into a very important factor that we must deal with. It's called face your tree. I'm gonna say it again, face your tree. You might say to me, Dr. Sean, so what is this face your tree as a man? When you have a date with God, you have to understand that the book of Genesis, which is the book of beginnings, and the book of Revelations, which is the book of end, Genesis starts with a tree, and the book of Revelations ends with a tree. It starts with this dynamic. As long as you are a man, you at some point in your life, and God forbid that it must not be too late. As a man, you must face your tree. You must face your tree. Adam faces a tree in Genesis 1. In Revelations chapter 3, the Laodicean church faces a tree. We all called as men to face our tree. So let's get into this. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 and verses 17, even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil. Verses 18, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verses 19, every that brings not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. 
Matthew 12, 33 says, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. I'm using the Gospels of Matthew and the narratives around Jesus and the teachings of Jesus to be my centrifugal point to raise under the subject of a mandate with God. During lockdown, a man must deal with his tree. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 44 and verses 19, shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? Meaning my rise or my fall is determined by what tree I come from. You'll notice then in Genesis chapter two and verses nine and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, you may eat freely. Verse 17, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Genesis 3 and verses 1 says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And the serpent said unto the woman, had God said you shall not eat of the tree of the garden? The serpent didn't speak to the man. So let me repeat. Number one, every man must face a tree. Number two, Jesus even raised that a tree is known by its fruit. A good tree brings forth good fruit. A bad tree brings forth bad fruit. Number four, God raises the fact that when he made man, the first thing God wanted to do was let a man face the tree. That's where I'm going to. In 1 Samuel 14 verses 2, and the Bible says, Saul stayed under a pomegranate tree. In 1 Kings 19 and verses 4, we'll find out that Elijah sat under a juniper tree. In Psalm 103, 100 verse, Psalm 1 verses 3, we call to be like a tree planted by the rivers. In Psalm 52 verses 8, the Bible says we are like green olive trees in the house of God. In Proverbs 11 verses 30, we are called to be trees of righteousness and life. In Proverbs 27, verses 18, we shall keep like a fig tree. In Song of Solomon 7, verses 7, we must be like a palm tree. In Song of Solomon 8, verses 5, it says, I was raised up under an apple tree. When you look at the scriptures or at the Bible, a prominent feature is tree. From Genesis to Revelations, tree. There's pomegranate tree, juniper tree, olive tree, palm tree, fig tree, apple tree. And if there's something that you must learn as a man in life, your victory lies in you facing your tree. Your victory lies in you as a man facing your tree. So there God takes Adam, he places him in front of a tree and he says, I want you to confront a tree and learn the lesson from a tree. Interesting that books are written, papers made from trees. You learn from a tree. But Matthew chapter one, verses one says, this is the family tree of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begot Judas and his brethren. 
a very important lesson. Even when we introduce to Jesus, we first introduce by the first book of the New Testament covenant, we introduce to Jesus tree. Genesis, Adam, book of beginnings, first lesson, Adam is introduced to a tree. In fact, Mark chapter 11, verses 13, raises an interesting dynamic of how Jesus responds. The Bible says, and seeing a fig tree afar off, Jesus comes closer, hoping he might find figs on it. Matthew 21, 19 says, and when he saw the fig tree, that there was nothing but leaves on it, leaves on it, he condemned it. And the Bible says, it dried up. And so I asked myself a question, what happened, Jesus? What did the tree do? And my mind brought me to Genesis chapter 3. And when Adam and Eve did not obey God with the tree, in their nakedness, they covered themselves with the leaves of a fig tree. And it's so true about us as men. Like a Jim Carrey, we'll use everything to mask us and to cover our nakedness, except learning from the book of Genesis chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 1. A man must face his tree. His victory is determined by him facing his tree. You see, if you ever want to make it in life as a man, if you ever want to succeed in life, your first mandate with God, in your mandate with God, the first thing you must do back to the book of Genesis is stand in front of your tree. I hope this is sinking in. This Bible, pages, pages, wood, wood, trees, is a tree speaking back to us. In fact, the Bible says in Acts chapter 5 and verses 30, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hung on a tree. And that is the crux of it all. And even up to Jesus, Jesus is allowed to hang on a tree. Why does he hang on a tree? Because Adam failed to deal the tree. And so Jesus pays the price and hangs on the tree. I hope you got that. And so that forms the frame of which I, as a neurotic counselor and a therapist, am engaging you. Whether you're watching me from Chicago, USA, Michigan, UK, Africa, different parts of India or Singapore, Malaysia or Australia. Every man must face his tree. Do you know, in life, there are many trees. There's our tree. At Christmas time, there's Christmas tree. As a person of Indian descent, we cook with curry leaf tree. And sometimes when we make mistakes like Tiger Woods or like Bill Clinton, we face another tree. It's called a dull tree. So that before we land in the cemetery, we've learned to deal our tree. And say that again. Every man must face his tree. Face your artery, your bloodline. Face your Christmas tree. What gets you excited? Your diet, face your curry leaf tree. Your weakness, face your adultery before you land in the cemetery. Your mandate with God on this Tuesday night is it takes a man to sit down and face his tree. 
You see, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots, according to Marcus Garvey. The first thing Matthew the disciple does when introducing Jesus is Matthew begins with Jesus' family tree. And before you and I can proceed with anything in life to make a success, we must learn from Matthew's value. Face your tree. In the Garden of Eden, it, it's because of a tree that the whole human race suffers. Because of a tree. Because of a bloodline, artery, we end up with a David and a Bathsheba, adultery. And we end up with a Solomon, a cemetery. You see, when you know your cultural background, where you came from can help you develop a strong sense of who you really are. The way you relate, relate to family stories creates your own narrative about yourself and it helps you establish your unique, authentic core identity. The truth is, you and I are only the sum total of many generational influences over our lives. Have you ever noticed in the book of Exodus, God says, and my curse is extended unto the third and the fourth generation. The sins of your fathers have come upon you. Makes you think, doesn't it? Makes you think. Why does God deal generational blessing, but also generational negative impact? This is the reality because God considers your artery, your bloodline. The life is in the blood and also there's death in our bloodlines. If We never change our bloodlines. So when I'm talking about this mandate with God, I'm saying to men, face your tree. The bloodlines in your families. You didn't just land here on the planet. You come from a father, come from a mother, and they come from a mother and a father, and they come from a mother and a father. Essentially, 32 people, according to scripture in Exodus 24, has shaped who you are. Heredity and environment shape the person we are. Knowing our family history will build resilience. Learning from our ancestors, learning from their failures and how they survived in hard times, or learning from their successes, very important. Have you noticed how blood tests reveal exactly what's happening in your body? Artery. You see, a tree carries your blood. And it's very, very important for a man to sit down and face his tree in his mandate with God, deal his bloodlines, deal his generations, deal his first, second, third, and fourth generation, and ask a simple question. How has that bloodline or bloodlines caused to shape the impact on my temperament, my value, my mood, my health, my perspective towards life. You see, it's about what makes us who we are. It's about who makes us who we are. Technically, in a tree, everybody can show the beautiful branches, and the beautiful flowers. But the truth is, we never have the courage to deal our roots. Our roots reveal our fruits. Jesus said, you shall know a tree by its fruit. The fruit is determined 
by the root. And you know, under the ground, the family bloodlines that you and I don't see, never see, have not seen, and sometimes the older people don't talk about this, and that's sad. It's vital that we sit down with the generations gone by. Hey, Daniel, and we ask them very important questions mm -hmm. and ask them, tell me about my roots. Tell me about my family roots from one generation to another. It just so happens that while we're running this series, my, my middle daughter, Tanil, is doing a vast, family tree research and coming up with the strangest of names, strangest of occasions, trying to wade, wade through different generations, going back four and five generations, and even into different countries, because we are mixed here in Africa. Our heritage comes from India and Europe and mixed into Africa. And when we have the courage to know our roots, we can change our fruits. You see, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter one, it's to the pulling down of strongholds. The Bible speaks about uprooting, tearing down, pulling down, then building and planting according to Jeremiah chapter one. You can never try to paper over the cracks in your family line, in your bloodline, in the generational line you come from. You have to be a man. You see, this series is not for sissies. Some people might just peep in now on Facebook and boom, they're off. You know why? I'm not saying things that appeals to tickle their theological gymnastics. This is not for sissies. This is for real men who want to sit down and face their tree. I know how the Facebook game goes and how it's played. We come on, we like, then we jump off. But when a man can do what a woman by the name of Mary did, sat down, sat at Jesus' feet and listened to his words, it shaped her faith and her destiny. So, Jeremiah says, before you can build, before you can plant, first acknowledge, uproot, pull down, tear down historical and generational impacts. Am I right, Pastor Polkadros? That have come and have messed up our bloodlines. In a moment, I'll tell you my story. I have a story. You see, unless we can overcome our strongholds and cast down these imaginations, we will constantly be victims. Strongholds have power, and I'll come to that in a moment. But I want to bring your attention to the scriptures in Mark chapter 1 and verse 16. It says as this, now, as he, Jesus, walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Mark 1.17 says, And Jesus said unto them, Come after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Verses 18, And straight away they forsook their nets and followed him. But Matthew 4.21 says, and when he had gone a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in a ship, mending their nets with their father, Zebedee. And the Bible says, and Jesus called them. Hmm. And if you heard what I just said. This is the picture. Jesus is looking for men he can use to become fishers of men. And the Bible says Jesus finds James and John sitting down, mending their nets with their father. They're fishermen. If Jesus is ever going to use men, Pastor Paul, 
to become fishes of men. He's looking for men who have the courage to stop fishing, have the truthfulness to mend their fishing nets. And number three, do it with their fathers. You know, Malachi, Malachi 4, 6 says, and God will restore the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the fathers. And I want to say to us, if we ever want to have a real mandate with God, we must face our tree, our family tree, our bloodlines, our generational impacts, and we must sit down with our fathers like Daniel Kadras will sit down with his dad, Pastor Paul Kadras, and say, tell me about the generations before me. Tell me what has been in our family tree. Tell me the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes as families, we, we play the game. We just want to talk about all the good things, not so in Matthew chapter 1. When Matthew says, and this is the family tree of Jesus, Matthew courageously, I wonder if you will allow Jesus to do that. And if you've just tuned in with us now on Facebook, this series is an hour series only for real men, not for those who are just trolling the Facebook to look for something that tickles their mind and jump off again. Stay on if you're a real man. Listen to what Matthew does. Matthew says Jesus' family tree had Abraham. Jesus' family tree had Jacob. Jesus' family tree had Rahab. Jesus' family tree had David. That is a mouthful. Can somebody listening and watching me have the courage to put their whole family tree on the table. You see, when a man has a date with God, God wants him first to face his tree. If you ever make history, learn to face your family tree and get your victory before you land in the cemetery or your family breakup because of adultery because you've never purified your artery. Have you got the courage to stay on and watch? Learn. This is not a tickling sermon series on Facebook. This is for men who are not sissies. They have the guts to face their family tree. What I found interesting is this. They were mending their nets. If there's something that's going to make men effective out there in Galilee, it's first having the courage to sit down and deal the broken nets in their life. Let us remake man so that we are restored to our effectiveness as men, husbands, fathers, dealing with the brokenness, the debris, the holes in our nets as men. You know how much, I'm sure some women are watching, and this is a very important series for women to watch because you might be married to a man who's got so much brokenness in his nets, but he's never had the courage to sit down and heal his nets. So he chases the woman dressed with fish nets, the Julia Roberts, the pretty woman walking down the streets. You see, if you want to be a man, like a John and a James, you must mend your broken nets. If Adam could face his tree to determine his history before he land in the cemetery, you must face the bloodlines in your artery and purge your family tree of adultery. And if you're in, of Indian descent like me, don't cover up with the curry leaf tree. Jesus hung on the tree. We celebrate our Christmas tree, but we're not honest to deal our adultery. Back to Jesus' family tree. Abraham was a weak man. 
that was in Jesus's family tree. He was ready to let another man sleep with his wife. I wonder if you'll do that. What do you think about that, Daniel? Newly married. My goodness, I think gangster will come out of us. I want to say to those of you who are watching right now, Jesus' family tree had Jacob. The name Jacob means thief, supplanter, liar. Tanaram, Tulsi, Huda, Skabenga, Skotan, Mangangan. All means a bad guy. But Matthew wasn't afraid to raise up Jesus' family tree. Then Jesus' family tree had Rahab. Which woman you know on the planet is called Rahab? I don't know whether they replaced the B for a D, whether it was Ray had or Ray was the last, or he was singing, hooray, 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 whatever. She was a prostitute. And you know what's important when Jesus is presented to us in Matthew is the first page of Matthew chapter one is Jesus is totally transparent about his family tree. You know, sometimes people look at us, we preachers, We've attained this in life. We, hey, 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 hey. You start by having the courage to show the world what tree you came from. That in spite of the messed up tree you came from, you uprooted, you tore down, you pulled out, and you built and planted so that you become a tree of righteousness, planted by the rivers to give your fruit in due season. Do you know that Jesus' family tree had David? I mean, there David has two women. He's not satisfied with two women. He goes to the rooftops and he's singing a rap song, Bart Shiva, Bart, ba 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 Bart, Bart, Bart Shiva. And guess what? No showering, Barting Shiva. And then David messed up his whole life. I love this about Jesus. He's totally blasé and transparent about his family tree. He's like John and James sitting down with their father and saying, let's mend our broken nets before we get out there into Galilee and deal with life. You see, two things fishermen did. They washed their nets and they mended their nets. All men. That's why if you're just trolling on Facebook and you're just popping in and already getting ready to pop out for whatever message tickles you the best, this is not a program for sissies. This is for real men who have a mandate with God. And the first thing a man must do, like Adam, face your tree. Like Matthew shows us Jesus' family tree. You know, when you can wash your nets and mend your nets, and not be ashamed. You're growing towards manhood. And I'll deal with that during the course of the week. Where Paul writes in Corinthians. He says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. When a woman is watching this program, she watches with an aha moment. That's why this program on Daniel Kadra's Facebook page, 7 to 8 p.m. India time, is not necessarily. This woman to wake and realize if I'm married to a man, the man must learn to deal his tree because if he can never deal his tree, you will be impacted by his history because he didn't purify his archery. And tomorrow when publicly celebrates his Christmas tree and yet behind the scenes, he's caught in adultery, you will bury him in a cemetery. Even if you don't have a husband, if you're looking for a man, find a man who can first face his tree. Let him face his history so that he doesn't praise you in misery. Amen. Amen. As, as of Indian descent, we're famous for cooking with our curry leaf tree. And everybody gets the aroma of our curry leaf tree. But not everybody has the courage to talk about the family adultery. Come on now. Some of us are of mixed descent. Some of us got European surnames. 
but our hair tells us very clearly that we are of African descent. Some of us got European surnames, but our pigmentation tells us we are of Indian descent. Somewhere along the line, some kachara, some nyaga nyagas happened in the pipeline. And until you and I can face our family tree, our date with God will never bring us to destiny. Do you know the word mend is mentioned 16 times in the New Testament? Mend, mend. It means to be equipped for a duty of function, to prepare something thoroughly. You must mend what's broken and wash what's dirty. You can never be effective as a man out there if you can't deal your nets. But you know what I like? You know what I like? Let me have my drink. James and John sat with their father Zebedee. Every man and every woman must have the courage to sit with their fathers. I never have this privilege to sit with my father. And tell my father, help me fix up these nets. I don't want to fall in the same hole you fell. You see, as men, we play with masks. During this time of Corona, everybody's wearing a mask. But as a man, you wear a stoic mask. You pretend no emotions. You wear an athletic mask. Great, sporty man, you know, athletic, Mr. Muscle Man. You wear a material mask, show all your possessions and your acquirements and your, and your fame. You wear a sexual mask. Oh, I can get her. I can get him. You wear an aggressive mask, like a Mayweather or, or, or a Rey Mysterio or an Undertaker. You wear a Joker mask. All the laughs and all the cover-ups. If you learn something about comedy, many, many comedians make jokes about everything else but they live in depression. In fact, you will find people who are the biggest jokers generally are the most depressed because they reflect or they deflect their attention off themselves. Some men wear this invincible mask, you know, don't tell me nothing, I'm a man. You know, men don't cry. Hmm. John 11, 35, Jesus wept. And if you're a lady watching, if you're an unmarried woman watching, if you're a father, a husband, or a brother, or a grandfather watching, you must face your tree to change your history that the next generation finds their destiny before you reach the cemetery. And don't be ashamed to deal the adultery rather than only celebrating the Christmas tree. Men got issues. And as men, we must deal our issues. We must deal our issues. Let me tell you my story. I am a product of a 17-year-old young lady of Gujarati, German, African, and Tamil descent who had a child from a man in his mid-20s who was of European, African, and Telugu, Andhra Pradesh descent. My father made my mother pregnant. He didn't marry her. My family tree says this, no marriage, I'm an illegitimate child. But in my same family tree, my mother's father, who was a Gujarati man from Surat, Gujarat, he made my grandmother pregnant without marrying my grandmother who was of mixed Tamil German descent because they couldn't marry across the cultural lines. My granny was born outside of marriage. I also learned that my granny's father, Dara Maestri Munsami Chinadu, my grandmother was born and my grandfather had not yet married my grandmother. Anna Rose Johns. But then I learned from my father's side. My father's father was a man of Telugu descent, Naidu, Andhra Pradesh. He was a married man who had another family. And he made my father's mother, my grandfather's mother, pregnant once, twice, three, 
four times my father's the fourth child yet he had another family of pure indian descent i've learned one truth my family tree has a history of adultery and children born outside of marriage you might call it the b word but god turned the b word into a b word for me i'm blessed the second thing i learned about my family tree is i learned from my mother my father was a murderer my father was a rapist my father went to jail i buried my father he became an alcoholic i learned that violence rape and murder shaped my family tree my young brother was murdered prematurely in his early 30s my mother's only brother was brutally murdered i learned in my granny's family murder 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 all murders i learned in my father's family murder in my mother's family murder shaped my history and those generations are now laying in a cemetery you know thirdly my youngest brother i watched him die under a drunken stupor painfully he became an alcoholic and a drug addict my father became an alcoholic my granny was an alcoholic you might say what are you talking i have the courage to go live on facebook and face my family tree like the book of matthew showing jesus history i wonder if you can do that you look all so lovely covered up in your revlon your avon your nice and easy and on your l'oreal's all your makeups and all that according to jesus is fig leaf cover ups we must have the courage you see if you're just trolling facebook now when you came on now because i have a watch party and this message doesn't tickle you you know why you don't have the courage to deal reality so you don't mind living in a bubble this program run by daniel kadros on india time 7 to 8 pm between monday to friday is for men who are not sissies and for women who want to help their men that's why brave women and real women will watch this program to the end you know i was saying sadly that my sadness in life is i learned too late of what was in my family tree and i repeated a lot of my history and god forbid i found mercy and forgiveness for my history and going forward because i only have one son and you know that miraculously i only have children from one woman four children from one woman my only son's name is farhan and he is a fantastic young man he's a great preacher and i love my son so much but god has blessed me with other spiritual sons all over the world that are of equal value because now no i no man after the flesh and i'm saying to you listening to me learn from jesus family tree learn from my family tree and have the courage to face your history before you go to the cemetery deal your adultery by clearing your artery rather than celebrating your christmas tree have the courage and change your destiny i've learned now to ask forgiveness for the bloodlines gone behind but i have broken the curse and the stronghold over my life i want to confess something to you listen to this you know i said my father was a murderer i could never understand growing up as a kid from 1 year old to the age of 40 listen to this pastor paul listen to this my friends in the uk usa africa durban south africa listening i hated my birth the spirit of rejection shaped me and i couldn't put my finger on it because i never grew up with my father god blessed me with a step dad who came into my life as a muslim man and he became a dad to me later on in my life and i i had the privilege to baptize him as a christian god bless hamid abdullah safadin who is my dad because he came and he fathered me when my dad wasn't at the space to father me i don't grudge my dad for that my dad lived a 
hard, hard life. Do you know that I never ever saw my father, my biological father smile. Never saw him smile. And I wondered why anger and aggression had shaped me. And I had to constantly, Daniel, lay this before God and say, help me deal with my family tree. Because when you are a man having a date with God, to, to come out of this lockdown, unlocking the purposes of God, you also need to be unlocked from your history that is impacted on your destiny before you land in the cemetery. God forgave me. I want to draw towards a close. I've got so much to share. It's coming up in my book, Men in Lockdown with God. Number one, you know when you're a man, have the courage, like you stand in the mirror and do your hair. I can't do that with my hair. Like you stand in the mirror and squeeze your pimples and try to look all so GQ and all that stuff. Do that <laughs> while you still have hair. <laughs> stand in front of the word of God as a man and face the areas of your strongholds. Look in your family trees. Look in you. Look in your mother's side look in your father's side look in your grandfather's side your mother's side your grandfather's side your mother's side look in your dad's grandfather's side look in those family trees going up 32 people ask the question is there depression despair self-pity loneliness suicide and bind those demons repent of them in your bloodline Break it strong all over you because your children might be impacted by your bloodlines if you'd never deal with them. Deal the areas of your stronghold as a man. And if you're a woman watching this, this is how you need to pray for your men. Is there pride in you? Pride in your father, pride in your mother, pride in your great grandmother, pride in your great grandfather. Ego, vanity, self righteousness, self centeredness. Find those demons. Repent of them. Get deliverance. Is there the occult? Oedia board, astrology, witchcraft, false religions that are prevalent in your family tree. Why don't you break its stronghold over your life? As a man, if you're watching, if you're just trolling and you're looking for a message on Facebook to tickle you, you on the wrong page. Get off. And go find something else to tickle you. This is a Daniel Kadros page to deal with real men who are not sissies. And real women who want to see men healed. Because a healed man can heal the world. If you find bitterness, resentment, hatred, unforgiveness, violence, anger, murder, doubt. All prevailing in you in your father, in your mother, in your grandfather, in your grandmother and their ancestors, clean out your bloodline. Repent on their behalf. If you see in you, in your family tree, addictions, compulsions, nicotine, alcoholism, drugs, food, gambling, clean out your family line. Wash the blood clean. Purify the bloodline. Repent on your behalf. If you see fears and phobias and rejection and failure and shame and self-rejection and perfectionism and denial, repent on behalf of your family tree. Clean that out of you. If you see rebellion and self-will and stubbornness and strife, and maybe even you're going to have to get back on Daniel Kadros' page and re-watch this message over and over and over again. Till you learn to purify your bloodline. If you see insecurities like inferiority and inadequacy and timidity and shyness, you get you're a man that always runs away from responsibility. You can never stand up to responsibility and be accountable. Hey, stop being a sissy man. She married you to become a man. Let your wife sing. What a man, what a man, what a man, what a my good man. Every woman deserves a man. God never give Eve a wimpy man, a sissy man, a mocho man. She gave 
he gave Eve a man with the image and the likeness of God. That's why men who don't shape the image and the likeness of God in him, they should never get married. Because you should never be giving a woman anything short of the image and the likeness of God in you as a man. And, and girl, stop chasing after men. You need to pray for the man to have his eyes test because the Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing and you should only look for a man that has the image and the likeness of God in him. Stop looking for good looks. Stop looking for big checkbooks and who can buy you a cell phone and who can buy you stuff because if they can buy you that they can't buy you love. If you find within your family tree deceit and lying and guilt and self-condemnation and shame and unworthiness, clean your family line. And lastly, if you find sexual impurity, lust, masturbation, homosexuality, adultery, fornication, frigidity, misogyny, nymphomania, these things prevail in your family tree. Be a man today. Adam covered up with fig leaves, but be the kind of man who can say, I want to clean up my family tree to purify my history before I land in the cemetery. Rather than always celebrate my Christmas tree, I'm brave enough to talk about my adultery because I can purify the artery. Great men, great men face their tree. Great men shape their history. Great men stand in front of their tree and realize that the Bible picture is about trees. Great men are like Jesus who can deal the wicked family tree in his life. And you know what's wonderful about Jesus? In spite of him coming from a messed up family tree, Daniel, Jesus still prevailed as a savior. Not because you and I, I come from a messed up family tree. And what? And so what? Because the Bible says that Jesus hung on a tree to save me. And that's my redemption. I've accepted Jesus. You see, a great man, he accepts Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life to turn his life around. You see, check this out, Holmes. My wrist is not broken, but I've got a man in my life. The man in my life is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He fills me he up. He gives me love. More love than I'd ever need. He's all I've got. And that's all you need. You're not a half a man. You're a real man. And real men have the man Jesus shaping their destiny in their life. Lastly, sit down with your fathers. Restore the relationships between you and your fathers. Mend the broken nets, wash the nets, and start your life all over again. You are watching the Daniel Kadros at India time, 7 to 8 p.m., on Facebook Live, Monday to Friday this week. And every night, I'm dealing with a different chapter in a man's life. Because when a man is in lockdown, he has a date with God to unlock his destiny by first dealing his history. God bless you. I trust that you were blessed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share. Don't be like people who are looking all over Facebook for some little uh, watch party going on just to get in there for a few moments to look for something that tickles them and they're gone. God can remake you. And Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him take up his cross, deny himself and follow me. And then he says, and I will make you. Your date with God is he wants to make you the best man. I'm not the best man. I fail so much. But you know what I've learned as a man? To be able to be honest, transparent, weep before God, be a worshiper, love the presence of God, love the word. But most of all, 
a man who walks in repentance and purity of heart because the pure in heart shall see God. And so, Daniel, thank you so much for creating this platform of healing men and women and wives and grandfathers all over the world. You, sir, you have created a space like James and John gave their boat for Jesus to heal people. Thank you for giving your Facebook page as the boat to heal men, heal India, heal America, heal South Africa, heal Durban, heal the UK, heal America, heal the world. And it starts with healing men. God bless you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. <laughs> wow. So we all have a lot of homework to do, and that is to find out our family tree and understand the where the weaknesses are and what is it that has been our greatest weakness and from where it has come through and deal with that, deal with that to the very T. You know, if you notice that, uh, even in what the pastor was sharing, if you heard about the kingdom of I, when the Israelites had gone to fight against it. And just before that, they had fought a war and they had stolen something which God had told them not to steal. Do you remember that, Pastor Sean? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then they hid yes. that and they hid it under the ground. And when they had to, when they went for war, they were seeing that they were not able to get that victory. And so he comes before God and he asks him as to... Aiken. Aiken is his name. Aiken yeah. is his name. Aiken. And it, was it Joshua yes. who was dealing with that? Yes, Joshua was dealing with Aiken. Yes. And... The, man who, the man who was hiding things in his tent. And how many men are watching us? Because nobody can see them. They're hiding things in their tent. But God sees them. That's true. And so when they, and the way they dealt with that, how Joshua dealt with the entire family is first he found out the entire, the, 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 senior, the senior members of the, of the different tribes. And then from there, yes. he went into getting to the root of the person and then destroyed the entire farm. The entire tree was wiped out just to deal with the weakness of that one man. The entire root wow. was Yo, that is some deep insight. So I would love for each and every one of us, we have our link posted in the comment section. Put your comments there and we'll let this net definitely answer those questions. And we would also love to, you know, I, I wanted to do this on a five day and even more days because I don't want it to be just a teaching of a one day. We rush through it and we're done. No, I need, we need to no. deal with this to the very roots. So I hope you're going to be doing your homework and that is getting into the deep, looking back into your life and starting to bring the things that are hidden inside you, bring it forth and deal with it. So thank you so much, Pastor Sean. And thank you, Aditya, for helping in every of the, the technical aspects. We really appreciate everyone for joining in. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow for session three we will be able to enjoy a little more about understanding the mandate with God. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless. Thank you.